And, you know, leading up to this passage of the NDAA, there has been quite a bit of discussion and debate, at least here at RT, about two sections of the bill, Section 1021 and 1022, and just how far the government can go in terms of detaining people indefinitely. As of now, anyone who the president determines to have substantially supported the Taliban, al-Qaeda, or associated forces may be designated as enemy combatants subject to indefinite detention. Now, that includes U.S. citizens. Senator Dianne Feinstein, a Democrat from California, tried to fix that, getting in what's known as the Feinstein Amendment, inserted into the bill. Now, it states that an authorization to use military force, a declaration of war, or any similar authority shall not authorize the detention without charge or trial of a citizen or lawful permanent resident of the United States apprehended in the United States unless an act of Congress expressly authorizes such detention. Well, for those who have been fighting to get U.S. citizens removed from this indefinite detention clause, uh, this seemed like a victory. But now several people are coming forward and saying... really quick about your case. I mean, does Chris Hedges still have a case? Before, his position was that the NDAA could affect him directly as a journalist, since uh, in years past he's had contact with people considered to be, you know, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, etc. Um, he's a U.S. citizen, so is this case closed? Thank you, uh, first of all, for having me on, Christine. I appreciate your, uh, your time this evening. No, his case is not closed at all. The fight goes on. The fight is... Uh, uh, still before the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. We won below in the U.S. District Court. Uh, the judge in that, in, in our case so far, Judge Forrest, has declared In terms of whether Chris Hedges still has a, a case right now, it's really unclear from the text of the Feinstein Amendment, because there's nowhere in the Feinstein Amendment, and, I, and I'm reading directly from the copy of it, that says that uh, Chris Hedges or any other journalist would be entitled to a trial by jury. In other words, it could be, it could be interpreted as simply a trial, which could be a military trial, a trial before a military tribunal, which is not a jury trial, and <clears throat> that would be unconstitutional. Uh, secondly, the, the, to the extent that, uh, and again, the 2013 NDAA is not law. So the, 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 until the president signs it and he's threatened to veto it, it is not law. So the Hedges case is still alive. We're in the midst of writing our briefs in the Second Circuit. We'll hear it soon. Uh, let's we, talk a little bigger picture. Gives with, the, uh, gives with one hand and takes away with the other hand. Because what this legislation does is it, even though it appears, and, and, and there are a lot of caveats that, even though it appears to carve out uh, U.S. citizens for protection and as well as green card holders, it exempts everyone else from protection. So uh, really what this, uh, uh, what all the civil liberties uh, groups are complaining about and what we believe to be the case as well is that you would still have indefinite detention by the military because it makes things worse in many respects. Yeah, certainly giving the military the power to sort of operate uh, in this country, uh, you know, the homeland battlefield uh, idea is really interesting, and, and it kind of put that, puts that in writing. Um, there's some confusion, though, Carl, because um, of the authorization for the use of military force, which, um, as we know, that passed right after 9-11 and basically gives the president unlimited power inside and outside of the U.S., and if I'm not mistaken, this is still in, fact, uh, in effect. Um, can you unravel this for us and what it means mm -hmm. in sort of normal language here? Yes. All right. I, I, I will, I'll do my best, but I, I think it... it
al-Qaeda, period. That's, all, that's the only people that were targeted under the authorization of use for military force. Now, the NDAA then expanded that to everyone, to journalists like yourself or to Chris Hedges or civilians or resident aliens or whomever, any civilian in the United States. And uh, that is the problem with the NDAA, is it goes way beyond the authorization for the use of, use of military force. And we're asking the courts to clarify all this. You're right, it's very difficult for uh, the ordinary Americans and, and, and your viewers worldwide. to detain, whether it be citizens, uh, illegal aliens, any civilian in the United States, period, end of story. Any civilian cannot be detained in the United States of America. And we think that is why even the new Feinstein Amendment is unconstitutional. If we have to challenge that, we will. But uh, it hasn't been enacted yet, and even as a, a fix, it makes things worse for a lot of people because, it, because what it does is it authorizes by statute, it makes clear by statute that for the first time the president can use military, uh, uh, the military to detain people within the borders of the United States. And that is un-American and unconstitutional. Uh, now, as far as uh, sort of the progression of what happens next, the House and Senate still need to go through and sort of find common ground before even sending the bill to the president. So there will be a few yes. differences they'll need to iron out. Um, yes. But as you said, Um, talk a little bit about why this is such a sticking point from, for, for both sides. I mean, why did the Senate include this, and why does the president say he would veto it if it's in the final bill? Because, again, most, most of this legislation is all, is all political posturing by people like, like Lindsey Graham, who resembles more a, a, a rabid dog than a reasoned constitutional scholar. He, was, he actually said that the reason they can't close Guantanamo is he doesn't want, quote, those crazy bastards end quote, in the United States. And in last year, he was quoted on the floor as, as saying, They do think, you know, the worst of the worst, um, the terrorists, are, are held there. But uh, let's not forget that, that a large number of people at Guantanamo Bay right now have, have been cleared for release, um, but just can't, have not been released because of, you know, certain political situations in their, the countries, um, uh, you know, their country of origin. So I think it's important to note here that uh, a lot of these, uh, I, I think you said, uh, crazy bastards, using Lindsey Graham's words, um, are, are not exactly that. Well, that's right. And that's and the same when, when Lindsey Graham says, uh, you're a terrorist, shut up, you don't get a lawyer. It's he who is deciding what people have done in advance. It, it goes against Obama's campaign promises to shut Guantanamo. Guantanamo has been a shameful chapter in American history. They've repeatedly been uh, uh, sanctioned and cited by the court for improper practices there. So, you, you know, we are part of this process, too, as lawyers. We are our Second Circuit case. Uh, uh, where the government is appealing Judge Forrest ruling, which stated the NDAA is unconstitutional, is, is, is coming up soon. We might even have some more litigation surprises that we'll let uh, RT know about uh, in, 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 the, in the near future. Well, we always and, appreciate that. Uh, you know, and let's not forget, you know, the president said he would veto it last year and ended up signing it on New Year's Eve. So, of course, we will keep sure. our eyes on all of this. Carl Mayer, attorney uh, at the Mayor Law Group, thanks so much. Thank you.